Well, this escalated quickly. So let me catch you up to uh, what's been going on here with this motor. So typically, if a motor is just sitting there buzzing, the easiest and most common problem is going to be a bad start capacitor. So because this is a single phase motor, it's going to have a start capacitor to get it kicked on and running. That's a very inexpensive thing and a very quick thing to fix. So I bought a new one, swapped it in, same exact problem. These things are fairly inexpensive and easy to replace. You just want to make sure you discharge them before you go touching them, anything. And, you know, turn off the power to the machine and, and all that because this is a uh, this is like a little battery. You touch that and it's not going to feel too good. So you can discharge it by jumping the terminals together with a screwdriver or something. And that will discharge the capacitor so you don't, uh, you know, shock yourself. So that was sitting here under a little cover. Here is one here on this drum sander. That's the star capacitor underneath this cover. Over here on my bandsaw, the star capacitor is here in this little box right here. Over here on my metal bandsaw, there's a star capacitor underneath that little cover there. So anywho, the easy solution wasn't the solution. So of course, I can't help myself but take things apart. So the fan cover comes off, the fan comes off, and then we can start looking at the, the start stuff in here and seeing if any of that is the problem. So another easy thing could be that the switch is stuck. So this is a switch that engages and disengages that capacitor from the motor as it starts to spin using centripetal force. As this thing spins faster, the weights spread apart, pulling on those springs, and that sucks this little inner ring here towards the outside, which will operate the switch in here, which I'll show you in a second. If this thing here gets stuck on the shaft, it's not sliding, that could be a problem too, but that was moving just fine, so that wasn't the issue either. So now we get into the actual switch, which is up inside of here. So this little ring thing here, this is what that switch will press into and up against. So as it's in there, it will operate that switch back and forth. This had some, uh, some like burning, I don't know, whatever you want to call that, arcing kind of thing going on there. So I thought maybe that was... The problem, I cleaned up the contacts and that didn't fix anything. So I figured I would just go for broke <laughs> and pull the rotor. Bearings still spin fine. <laughs> but inside of here, there is some, um, some burning or some arcing or something that doesn't look super promising inside of there. So. So I don't know, the start winding is probably fried or something. I don't really know. It's not a huge deal. And that's because I've been meaning to swap this motor out for a while, whenever I had some free time for a side project. But like most things in life, if you put a project like that on the back burner, it'll come up at the most inopportune time. So I wasn't really planning on doing this now, but now is uh, when it's gonna happen. So if you recall a few years ago, I swapped the straight knife cutter head in here for a spiral um, helical head. And we did the testing on the power draw between the two heads. And as we know, the spiral heads take more power. So I have been missing the ability to hog as much material as I used to be able to with the, uh, the straight knives for you know a few years. It's not a huge deal, but it's one of those things where I kind of would like to have a little more power in there so I can work a little faster like I used to be able to. So I have this motor, which we'll take a look at in a second. This is a five horsepower motor. And this one here is a three horsepower motor. When you buy these planters new with the spiral head in them, they come with a five horse motor. So this is more in line with what this planter actually needs to be able to perform in the way that it used to. So a few years ago, a viewer sent me this motor. He had ordered a five horsepower motor from a supplier. This is the one that he received. It was damaged in shipment because it was packaged pretty poorly. So they sent him out a replacement motor and told him to just keep this one. So having no use for it, he sent it to me. And uh, I thought, oh, you know, someday when I'm bored, <laughs> I, can, uh, I can put it in there. So it does have some kind of dents and dings and things. Not a huge deal because you know, it's going to be hiding in a cabinet. So I don't care how it looks. The only issue that I have to fix is that the fan is kind of rubbing on the, um, the shroud here. So we'll have to do something with that to fix it up. And because this is not just a simple swap of one size motor to the same size motor, we're going to have some uh, extra things to deal with. 
So stepping through all of the requirements, there's I think three kind of categories of them. Physical requirements, so that mounting plate down there is meant for the base plate on a three horsepower motor. So we need to adapt this mounting plate for the larger base on these five horsepower motor. We have the electrical, so we have the switch and the wiring, which is meant for a three horsepower motor. So we need a five horsepower starter and any applicable bigger wiring we need for the larger motor's draw. And then lastly, we will have the transmission system. So we need to keep the cutter head spinning at the same speed it's spinning now. And that's actually one of the bigger problems with this motor. I just, I happen to have this motor, so I'm gonna use it, but it is a low RPM motor compared to this one. So this is a, a 3,600 RPM motor. This is an 1,800 RPM motor. So we need to adjust the pulley sizes to keep this one spinning at the same speed. And uh, we'll get to that. So I think the first thing I wanna work on is the physical part, getting it in there and getting it mounted. However, I need to jump to electrical first a little bit because I wanna make sure I get this situation here figured out. So I'm gonna wire this up temporarily on the bench here so we can get it spinning and I can work on figuring out what's going on with the fan first before I go sticking it in there because it's gonna be easier to figure out this fan thing here on the bench than it's gonna be when it's down in there. Okay, our switch is wired and ready to go whenever we get to that. I'm gonna pull this cover off and kind of see what the heck is going on with <laughs> the fan and the cover and this situation. <laughs> Well, this screw is bent. <laughs> At least we got that. It's a little, a little bent, so that needs a new screw. At least that one. So we got a broken fin on the fan. But otherwise, it looks fine. We're gonna, may, we're gonna be missing all the spacer hardware for one of the fan studs. I'm not too worried about that though. <laughs> the fan covers definitely have seen better days. It's pretty well banged up. So I'm noticing some like junk that might be coming from the capacitor cover. So I'm gonna take this cover off and hopefully they're not like exploded or leaking because it looks like capacitor juice. So I'm not really sure what this is. It's drippy and this side's kind of goopy. <laughs> so I'm not super thrilled about what's going on here. So yeah, it looks like one of the many things got damaged in shipment was this uh, this capacitor here. So it's all cracked and broken. So, so I'm gonna order another capacitor, I guess. And we'll move, we'll keep moving forward. Yeah, yeah. We'll come back to the fan situation later. This would be a lot easier to work on now. I can actually like work from above instead of trying to climb in the side. Okay, let me walk you through my plan that I have for this. So these slots here, these are the slots that align with the old motor, 
the size of that uh, mounting frame area and they don't align with the new one because the new one's wider. So this is giving me my adapter plate. So this will kind of go down in here. And my thought is I could put studs on the underside, which will tie into these slots and be in the same location as the, uh, the old motor. And I'll put studs on this top side to receive the new motor. And uh, that little adapter plate should fit in there okay. It's probably longer than I need, so I can probably trim it down a little bit. I want to be able to... Actually, I could probably just leave it because it's not going to need to go up and down that much. This is how you adjust the tension on the belt. So I'll probably have too much distance here, but let me toss the motor in here and make sure that the shaft is going to line up uh, correctly. And I don't need to like bring the plate over this way and put the mounting holes somewhere else, like here by accident. a lot more motor <laughs> than the old one. So I think this is actually going to work out pretty well. The shaft is pretty well centered in the hole and I will have to have my mounting uh, studs pretty much at the edge of the plate and that should still give me some clearance here for the, um, the adjuster things. The, the belt tension adjusted mechanism. So that's that's a good thing. You ready for the bad news? Well, not the really bad news, just Something, some kind of new thing. <laughs> that motor is also kind of too tall <laughs> to go in there. So by the time I get the uh, any kind of like tension adjustment in there, this motor is going to come up a little bit. It barely fits right now. So I will need to also install a spacer in here to make this gap a little bit bigger. So one more complication with trying to shove this motor in here. So the holes are drilled and tapped and now I can start making the studs. So that's going to look something like that. So I have some lengths of all thread. I'm just going to cut some pieces that are about an inch and a half long and that'll give me enough to go through the um, adjustment plate here and have some room for a nut and washer on the other side. This side will get welded later on. So let's cut some more. Now I know because I'm welding this, I don't technically need to have tapped this beforehand, but having that uh, the plate itself actually tapped makes lining up and getting these studs in nice perfect alignment. Like they're nice and square to the face, they're not leaning at some kind of wonky angle, and they're clamped in place with the nut on this side. It makes me feel better <laughs> than just drilling a through hole and plug welding it in from the back and hoping that stud stays, you know, squarish. Um, so you can see the only little detail here is I have the stud down from the surface about a quarter of the thickness of the plate. It's about a, a sixteenth of an inch or so. This is a quarter inch thick plate. So that's going to give somewhere for the weld to go because I need to grind this side flush because this is going to go down onto that plate in the bottom of the planer. So did, uh, did anyone notice in the moment the error that I just made? So the studs are supposed to be sticking out this side of the plate, 
but uh, I put them the wrong way. I even thought in the moment, don't forget to put them the right way onto the side that was laid out. I think I can save this. I'll just cut this plate and I can also just cut it down to shorter size. This side of the plate where this end of the motor is going to mount, my mounting bolt might be kind of close to the edge. But, uh, yeah, we'll see. I'll make a few cuts, grind these welds back, and then we'll take a look. This is just barely going to work now. So with the other setup, I had enough room so that uh, the studs would miss each other. I'm not going to have that anymore. Or I'm not going to have nearly as much clearance as I had before. Or had I, that I had planned for, I guess. Okay, let's see if I uh, got this or if I screwed something up and I'm going to be chasing my tail trying to figure it out. <laughs> let's see if I got this on the first try or if there's something else that uh, is wrong. I think it's gonna work. It's a little tight. One of the many things that are damaged on here is this motor mount is bent. So I think I could probably shut it down on a stud. The stud's going through, just kind of at a goofy angle because of this bracket. So I can uh, I can fully seat it, but I'll be able to take it out, which I guess at this point doesn't really matter. Okay, it's in there. It has been a few days, the new star capacitor is here, so I want to get this thing into the motor and uh, see if it works. <laughs> see if this thing actually spins. This motor is reversible, so I want to make sure I got it spinning in the right direction for 
the cutter head, which I believe it should be spinning counterclockwise. So uh, we'll get that in there and hopefully there's nothing else that's wrong that I have to fix. Okay, I've made my connections here, which should be counterclockwise according to this diagram. Let's, uh, let's, let's see if this works. That works. <laughs> it's uh, not bolted down. So a little jump there on startup. Well, now that I know that it actually turns on and works, <laughs> I can feel a little more confident getting this thing going for real. So I got started and immediately I thought, why am I working on the floor? <laughs> why not work at some kind of comfortable height? I wasn't able to find any more of these uh, spacing bushing things at the store at least, so I'll have to come up with uh, two more out of something. They're just spacers, so I'm not too worried about what they end up being, but I gotta, I gotta, I gotta find something. So here's what I found. The handle for an acid brush or flux brush or whatever you want to call it is uh, the right size. So this one's a little bit shorter now. <laughs> And now I have all my spacers for uh, the uh, motor fan cover thingamabobber. And actually the size of that spacer is pretty important because there uh, isn't much clearance. So even if I wanted to, I couldn't use some washers or some nuts there because it's, uh, I don't know, under an eighth of an inch of clearance between a fan blade and that spacer. All right, all bolted down. It's in there now. So now we need some kind of spacer on here to bring the, uh, the mounting point for the planter up to clear this little bump here for the capacitors. Uh, there is a little bit of negative space on the underside of the actual casting there for the planter. But right here is where the tensioner for the chain linkage that connects the four posts together is kind of sitting. So it does need uh, some additional clearance. And I want to be able to bring the motor up on the uh, adjustable mount here so I can get the uh, the belt length a little shorter and uh, actually be able to get the belts on to uh, to tension it and uh, and all that. So one thing I could have done is taken the capacitors, extend the leads and mounted the capacitors 
somewhere inside the cabinet, but uh, I don't really care. <laughs> the downside to this is if I ever need to change the uh, the capacitors, uh, I'm probably going to have to take the planer off the stand again, but uh, it's not, not a hard thing to do. So the, uh, the distance that I need is about uh, an inch and an eighth. So if I put this board across here, I got a little mark on there. And that is uh, about an inch and an eighth up from the bottom. So I need at least that to have basically no clearance. And I want to have a little more extra. So I have all these blocks of LVL from doing the, uh, the renovation on the house. This stuff is uh, pretty hard, not really all that compressible. And it's uh, nice and uniform and stable, which is really nice. When we did the renovation, and every time I showed these, a lot of people ask what LVL stands for. It is laminated veneer lumber. It is a bunch of thin laminations of wood together to get uh, increased strength. So the, the stand only really transfers load down to the floor on the corners. So I'm just gonna make some little blocks here, some little triangles to go on the corners, drill some holes through it. And those will be our super basic riser blocks. The LVL is an inch and three quarter thick. Okay, let's see if we can get this thing, <laughs> this thing back on top of this thing. I did buy some longer bolts, so at least I thought ahead. But uh, the way this has been going, <laughs> we'll see. So we've got uh, physical checked off the list, electrical, we're getting there. Next up is transmission, and this is where things get, uh, you know, sort of interesting. So we want to keep the, uh, the top pulley here spinning at whatever speed it was spinning at before with the old motor, and there are two ways you can do this. You can reverse engineer that by taking a measurement of this pulley and this pulley down here read the motor plate on the motor that's in there, and you can stick it into a calculator. I'll leave you a link to the one I'm using for this. It's uh, super handy. I use it back when I built the sawmill. Just makes the uh, computations super easy. So you can do it that way. You can reverse engineer it, or you can look at the owner's manual, <laughs> and it'll tell you what the RPM of the cutter head should be. So in my case, it's a 5,000 RPM cutter head. So this shaft right here is spinning at 5,000 RPM. That's what it should be spinning at. This pulley is spin at 5,000. So we need to get something going here to get that pulley spinning at 5,000 RPM. So here is where sort of the difficulty comes in with me trying to use this motor, which is not the best motor for this. <laughs> and that is, this is a lower RPM motor. It's half the spin that the other one was. So if I had bought the same speed motor that's in there already, I could just measure this pulley and buy a replacement. If you are going to a larger motor, you're going to have a larger shaft size. So it's very likely that the pulley from the old motor will not fit the new one. The bore size will be too small if you're going up in motor size. So you're going to need a new pulley regardless. Luckily, not super duper expensive. But here's the thing for me at least, because <laughs> my motor is spinning uh, half as fast, I need twice as big of a pulley to make this one spin at the same rate. The other thing you could do is you could reduce the size of this guy and that would also help to raise the RPMs a little bit more. But this pulley is just probably, this is about as small a pulley as you could put on the shaft. So this one can't get any smaller. 
which means I have to make up all the difference down at the bottom. So there is the new drive pulley, which will go down there onto the shaft. The only reason this is a problem for me is because now this pulley does not fit inside the guard assembly that was on here before. So I'll have to make a new guard, but it's, uh, you know, why not <laughs> at this point? Why not? <laughs> we can, uh, we can keep going with that. So if you haven't seen these before, these are taper lock bushings. These allow you to buy, you know, whatever pulley size you need, and then you can match your pulley size to your actual shaft. So it's like a two piece assembly compared to this, which is a single piece assembly. Not, uh, not a big deal. You just have to buy the right, um, taper lock bushing for the pulley that you're buying too, because the taper, the taper here used to match the, uh, the, the pulleys, the pulleys taper as well. So this part here is tapered along its length. So as this gets forced into this pulley, there are some bolts here, which pull this thing into that pulley. That's gonna close the split and it's going to squeeze itself down onto that shaft. That's how it maintains its grab. On this one, this just had a bolt that went into the end of the shaft. That's how I got pinned on there. So just a little bit different style just to Kind of helped along with that. Uh, your key stock's probably gonna be different too, so keep that in mind too. So this is a quarter inch by quarter inch key stock. You can buy them pre-made or you can buy a stick of them and cut whatever length that you need. Now one more complicating factor to keep in mind with this, because this is always something. <laughs> this planer, and most planers probably, come with an import motor. So on the import motors, you're gonna have a metric shaft. So you have to buy a metric pulley or a metric uh, taper lock bushing to go inside of there. Uh, that could complicate things too. If you're trying to reuse parts or whatever, my, I guess domestic made, made in the USA motor or whatever, it's got an imperial shaft. So this is an inch and an eighth shaft with a quarter inch keyway. So I'm gonna get this pulley on here and then we'll see if the belts that I thought we're gonna be the right size, still work, because I calculated the belt length before I knew I needed these blocks in here. Another feature of these taper lock bushings is when you need to remove them, they have tapped holes over here, so you take the bolts from this hole, which is tapped into the pulley, and then you feed them into this one here, and those will be jack screws, and they'll allow you to like, actually pull this thing out of the taper. Otherwise, you're not getting it off. I'm gonna leave this guy a little bit loose for a second so I can come in and out. I wanna get the outside face aligned with the outside face of this guy so that these two pulleys are nice and parallel. And then I can start locking it down into place. But you can kinda of see how it's a little loose in here so it can slide on the shaft. But once I start forcing this thing in here into the pulley, this slit's gonna close and it's gonna squeeze down on the shaft. And while I'm at it, let's see if this is gonna be long enough. Yeah, it's... <laughs> it might be, it might be just barely long enough. So let me, ra let me raise the motor up first and then we'll see for sure if I'm gonna need to order more belts again. Okay, <laughs> new belts are ordered, so uh, another couple of days for for those. Uh, I'm gonna switch over to working on the electrical. So this box is bigger than the uh, the last one, so that means this mounting plate doesn't quite uh, make it here. So I got one bolt here on the top. Bottom one is not quite there. Uh, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drill a hole through the box because 
there's nothing there in the way. So I can have a mounting point inside the box. That is going to kind of defeat the uh, the dust rating on this box because the the fasteners are completely outside of the uh, cavity of where the electronics are. I don't care. <laughs> I'm not particularly worried about it. So instead of making a whole new mounting plate, because I don't feel like doing that right now, or making some kind of thing that extends it down to catch this here, or just leaving it bolted in one place, I'm going to drill a hole. I don't care. <laughs> Okay, longer belts just showed up, so let's see if that's long enough. Okay. That's gonna work, so let's get this pulley attached. So I'm using a straight edge here to align the pulleys, so I have it resting there on the bottom one, and I'll take it and look and see. It's getting closer, maybe an eighth of an inch. I'm right in line with the end of this nut right now, or that bolt is. Yeah, bolt. Right in line with the end of that bolt. All right, I got about a sixteenth of an inch, so I'm going to start tightening down the um, the bolts here to start sucking the pulley into. The, uh, the bushing, and I should actually pull the pulley this way a little bit, so we'll we'll, we'll kind of see where things end up as they start kind of snugging up. But uh, we're close. That's pretty good. Yeah, that's good. Okay, so pulleys are aligned. Just lock this down a little bit more, and then we should be good to go. Okay, we got our belts on there. Let's, uh, let's put a little tension on it. Maybe a little more, but it's uh, probably pretty close. Okay, let's uh, see if it works. Okay, power's on. Let's see, I'll stand over here. <laughs> oh. 
Of course I wired it backwards. <laughs> okay, well, uh, let me flip some wires around and uh, try it again. <laughs> of course! Okay, let's try this again. Okay, that is spinning counterclockwise. And I don't know, maybe I just can't read or I just misinterpret what this says. But uh, I read this as do what the diagram says and it will spin counterclockwise. Uh, change leads five and eight and it will spin clockwise. Apparently, <laughs> if you interchange five and eight according to this diagram, then it spins counterclockwise. I don't know. I don't care. <laughs> whatever. At this point, it's, that's a whatever moment. Okay. I get that button back up, and then we'll give it a little test. Looks like next we're gonna need a belt guard. And magically here is a uh, brand new custom guard for the new machine. I did a separate video while making this. It was kind of a fun little quick project to do on the new welding table and I'm uh, pretty happy with the way it turned out. It was also kind of nice to do something kind of quick. So let me throw this thing on here. We can kind of move on a little bit. All right. Eh. I think I'm gonna give this some more paint because it's kind of it's kind of blotchy. I'll be right back. Okay, a few more coats of paint. That's a lot more even and uniform looking. I think that's quite a bit nicer. So I think it's a kind of better color for it. Although I kind of wish this whole thing was uh, red and matched the motor, just like that bell guard does now. Uh. I think that's the best upgrade yet. <laughs> okay, and the last little thing on the upgrade list is electricals. So the electrical has been swapped all the way back to the panel for the higher draw of that motor. And now I wanna go back to the original thought behind this whole thing is, does the bigger motor allow me to have the same experience that I used to have with the straight knife cutter head in here? So if we go back to the spiral head swap video, I did a test in there comparing the uh, the straight knives with knives that had been in the planer for a while. So they weren't really, they weren't sharp, but they were pretty close to being dull. They're ready to be swapped out. Comparing those against the actual brand new insert head, the straight knives were able to make a 3 sixteenths of an inch deep pass on 10 inch wide cherry without really any problem. And that was too much uh, material being removed for the spiral head. The spiral head could only remove about an eighth of an inch of material using a similar uh, load on the motor. So we're gonna repeat that same test, sort of a little bit, just to see if it actually works this time or it can do it. So I have a piece of cherry, which is uh, maybe a little bit wider than before. And I'll repeat the same kind of test. This is more like a pass or fail kind of thing. I'll run the board till I find the cut. Then we'll advance the cutter head 3 16 of an inch. That's three rotations of the handle and we'll see if the planer can actually make that cut. That's really all I'm looking for is, can this planer now make a 3 16 inch depth of cut on a cherry board 10 inches wide? Because that'll be comparable to dull straight knives. Okay, it wasn't super happy about it, but it did do it. So I would say that a spiral head with a five horsepower motor is almost as good 
as a three horsepower mortar with dull straight knives. It's very close, very, very close. This is much closer to what I used to be used to, which is uh, kind of nice. Now, is this something you should do? <laughs> eh, maybe. It's, it's definitely uh, a fun little side project if you're into that kind of thing. Uh, if you're gonna do it, just buy the replacement motor for the, uh, the 1033X. That's the five horsepower motor that's made to go in the newer version of this planer and buy the pulley that go along with it. And all you have to do really is swap, make some kind of adapter plate down there and then you know swap the, the switch and you should be pretty much there. It'd be less messing around with making new guards and doing different pulleys and all the other stuff that I went through. But you know, it's kind of fun. It's a nice little, I'll, I enjoy these little projects like this because it's like this own little like fun adventure kind of thing, which you know, I enjoy every now and then. But if you don't enjoy that kind of thing, I don't recommend it. <laughs> so that's gonna do it for this one. Thank you as always for watching. I greatly appreciate it. If you have any questions or comments on uh, doing something silly like swapping the motor in your planer or anything else there in the shop, please feel free to leave me a comment. As always, I'd be happy to answer any questions you might have. And until next time, <laughs> happy working. Plane some wood, make some sawdust, do something.